What we as productive black people need to do is to understand our industry. I don't care if you're white collar, I don't care if you're blue collar, somewhere in between, okay, or somewhere outside of the two. You need to know your industry. Why? This is how we're going to help each other, okay? So if somebody has a question, right, it can be answered or you can be referred. So if somebody says, yo, I'm thinking about getting into the metal career, the, 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 the medical field, okay, um, you know, in some sort of position, the healthcare industry, um, I may not know the answer, but I can say, hey, I know I have a friend who's in that industry. You know, let me give you her email and her phone number and you guys can talk. And because my friend has done the research into her industry and knows what's going on, we can help each other. Okay, we can actually help each other. This is what a network does as well. It helps each other. When people have questions, they can go to somebody where they can be feel secure that they're getting proper information. Because you know how it is. People will give you wrong information just because you're competing with them. Right? You know, you know, them helping you know as much as they do doesn't help them from a competitive viewpoint. So they're not going to give you, you know, proper information. Okay? Um, or if I have somebody who, you know, wants to get into construction or, you know, law or accounting or whatever it is, I can say, okay, I have a boy who knows about that. Yeah, you know, we're having a kickback next Saturday. Come by. He's going to be there. You guys can chop it up. Right? That's what we need to see. But in order to do that, you have to understand your industry and what's going on. Okay, so the challenge for those who are productive, know your industry. Okay, know what's going on. Um, how do you guys get paid? Uh, how has the recession actually hurt you? And what, what needs to happen for your industry or your job or whatever to get back on track? Because it's not the same for everybody. You know, how different industries make money um, depends on how they're going to get back on track. Whether they get, you know, state funding or private funding, I don't know how they get their funding, fundraising, I don't know. But it just depends on what you do. Or does it depend on the global economy, what's going on in China or markets in Asia? Who knows? But it's really up to you to figure out. And obviously you do that through your research, um, you know, your, your, your Googles and all this other good stuff. But it's also talking to people within your industry. You know them, you have the connects, what's going on? Okay, you can talk to somebody who's new. You can talk to somebody who is mid-career. You can talk to somebody who is, you know, a head honcho in the game and just figure out what's going on. And also it helps you. Why? So you can make better choices. Do you stay in your industry or do you move? Do you go work for another employer within your industry or do you stay? Those are the questions that you need to know. You know, we as black people, we have to be smarter than everybody else when it comes to profession. It's not enough to say I have a degree and I have a good paying job. You have to be smarter. You have to know stuff that the average person isn't going to know. That's how you survive. Okay? That's how you're able to make smarter choices. Now, for example, in terms of education, um, especially in California, you know, we're suffering not because there's a overflow of teachers. You know, before the economy got bad, especially in California, we didn't have enough people to go around. They were begging people to get into teaching. They were going out of state and recruiting people to come to California to teach, telling them, come work for us and you won't pay back your student loans. You know, sign up to work for us for three years and or three or four years and you won't have to pay back any of your loans or we'll give you $20,000. You know, we'll set you up. We'll do whatever you need to do. We need you out here. Right. You know, um, we have a lot of areas that are growing. And of course, when your areas grow, what happens? People move in, they bring kids or they start having kids and these kids have to go to school. Right. They have to go to school. So schools are going up. Okay, schools are still going up, but unfortunately, there's just not enough. There's no, there's no money to pay. Why? Well, we get money from the state. That's the direct, you know, source of funding. So obviously, the school districts get money from you know the state, um, and they disperse it in terms of salaries and all these, all the other expenses that a school district will have. Okay, um, so if the state's not doing well. The schools aren't going to have any money. That's where we get our money from. So if that's the only well, or the major well, and it's running dry, we're pretty much screwed. Even though we have a growing need. Okay? Um, 
and it affects everybody. Even the whole supplemental education um, uh, companies, you know, your after school programs, your tutoring companies, and you know, all these other services that uh, go along with public education, they get money from the state as well, or they get money from the school districts that get their money from the state. So literally, everybody's cut off. Okay, the whole tree dies. All the branches, all the leaves, all the twigs, everybody dies because we all get the same source of uh, nourishment. Okay, there's only a couple that are doing well, and typically those are those who market towards upper class families and students where the parents pay directly. So they're paying, you know, the school directly in terms of tuition, or they're paying certain companies directly through payments. They're not going through the school district. So their funds aren't based off of state funding. Right. But those are, you know, far and few. OK, even the stuff that I want to do in terms of my own business will be reliant on the state doing well because the school district will be paying me. Right. Um, so it's really putting a hold on some of the things that I want to do privately. But that's what's going on. OK. And also. Apart from the state not having money, you have teachers who haven't retired. There's a lot of baby boomers in teaching, okay? And as you guys know, or at least most of y'all don't know, teachers get paid well, factoring in their vacation time and their benefits, especially when they've been in the game for a long time. They have tenure, so they can't be fired, right? Um, you know, you can, walk, you can walk on a high school or a middle school, or not even, no, excuse me, not middle school, a high school or elementary school, 80 to 90% of the teachers there are tenured and they've been there for a long time okay and you know what that means like I said we get paid on a pay scale they're making over a hundred K or close to it right so you can walk to a, on an elementary school campus and see that ninety percent of the teachers there have been there for over 18 20 years and they're all making a hundred K that's a lot of money okay if you got one of those people to retire, you can possibly hire two brand new teachers. So think about it. Let's say you had a school of, and they had 20 teachers all making 100K. They retire. Guess what? You can, for the same amount you pay in their salaries, have 40 teachers as opposed to just 20. Even with the state having limited funding. That's what's going on. Literally. You have older teachers, the baby boomer generation. Some of them are walking in canes, old, elderly, right? But they lost money too in terms of their IRA, IRAs and their investment accounts and all this other good stuff when the economy tanks, right? So now they're working. They're just sitting back and working. And like I said, they have uh, uh, tenure, Okay, you have high school teachers who've been there 19, 20 years. They have the best classes because they've been there for so long. You know, honors kids, AP kids, chilling. Low stress making six figures. I've had PE teachers show me their paycheck stubs. And they've been there forever. They're just chilling out having fun. Coming to school in, you know, Nikes and uh, uh, windbreakers every day making, you know, 100K. Having fun. There's no need for them to retire. So you literally have that going on. Apart from the state not having any money, you have that going on. So for the most part, for those of us in public education, it's not even on some waiting for the state to bounce back. We're just waiting for these people to retire. <clears throat> Different districts like my district, you know, they're begging these people to retire. They're begging them, please retire, please retire. But they're like, no, this is easy. This is chill. I'm not stressed out. I have tenure. You can't fire me. Right? I have great classes that I'm not worried about. You know, like I said, you know, you got these high school cats, they're just teaching honors and AP. So they got the kids who are good, good behavior, who know they're going to college. They do this year in and year out. Right? So literally, everything that they do is in a folder. You know, it's all broken down to the point where, you know, Anybody can come in and just hand out the paperwork that they do. All their notes are saved on PowerPoint, and they come in chilling, making over six figures a year. 
you know, I've seen some high schools where uh, the husband works there and the mother works there and the wife works there and they're both making, you know, uh, 100K chilling. Why should they retire? It's a low stress job for them. So literally you have that going on. Okay. So like I said, I, we're not even waiting. At this point, we're not waiting for the state to come in. We're just waiting for them to retire because that's going to make things a whole lot easier for everybody. Right. So that's what's going on in my industry. And I know this because, you know, I talked to people, I did my research and, you know, you just formulate an idea of what's going on. So we need to have these conversations. I need to be able to talk to somebody about accounting. I need to talk to somebody about healthcare or just all the other fields. Right. That's what we need to happen. And it's relatively easy to do. Right. Um, so, you know, once again, just a little piece of information that we all can use and actually build these so you know quote unquote black networks that we need to have so i'll take it easy god bless